Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 49 of Direwolf20's Let's Play. Uh, today I'm going to build a couple new machines from Industrial Craft, and I don't know what else we'll figure out, maybe something cool, we'll see what happens. But let's get started and uh, start building. Now the first thing I want to do today is work on this machine right here, the Terraformer. A pretty fun machine, I definitely like it. We're going to need an empty Terraformer blueprint which is crafted pretty easily. Electronic advanced and two redstone. So why don't I get the ingredients I need for this and I'll be right back. All right, so making myself an advanced machine and I'll make a empty terraformer blueprint and get the dirt going. And it was glowstone dust that I need there, right? Hey, cool, a terraformer. I love the terraformer. It is a very fun machine. Uh, there's actually a bunch of terraformer blueprints available to you guys. Uh, there's the flatification, which flattens out an area. Desertification, which makes the area desert. Chilling, which puts a whole bunch of snow around. Irrigation, which turns desert into grassland, basically, the opposite of desertification. And then cultivation is the one I'm going to go for today. Um, that's going to grow a bunch of cool stuff. And then there's, of course, the empty one. So I'm going to need four seed packets and another one of these empty TFBPs. And I should have... I'll grab a regular electronic circuit out of there. I'm going to have to go request an advanced one from my remote orderer here just to get another empty TFBP. And uh, why don't I start thinking about where I'm going to place this thing. And I'm definitely going to have to hook up a Lapitron system to get those Lapitron crystals to and from the system. So why don't I get started building the components for that, which you've all seen me build a dozen times. So I'll probably do all that stuff off camera. And I'll be back once I have, hopefully, everything I need. But as you know, I tend to forget some stuff. All right, guys, just crafting up the ender chests that I'm going to need for this. As you know, uh, I've done this a dozen times now, or well, maybe not quite a dozen, but you get the point. Uh, I'm going to need a bit of this stuff. Two of you and two of you. going to need some more rose red in the future, but that eh, will be cool. All right, so let's go outside and figure out exactly where I want to do some... Uh, I, I just like the, the terraformer blueprint for the forest. I think it's just awesome the way it looks. And I need to go find a good spot for it. And I think I've already decided where I want it to be. I want it to be right out here. This looks like a pretty nice place to set up a forest, don't you think? Yeah, I think this will be nice right here. So I'm just going to pick a random spot wherever. doesn't terribly matter where I place down my terraformer. I'm just going to stick them right there for now. And I believe I've got my little bag of tricks here with this guy and this guy because I'm sure I forgot something that I'm going to need. So why don't I get down and lay down this and make this receiving true. Frequency zero, good. Only one pipe. I didn't leave that connection somewhere. Um, I know I did for sure forget a few pieces of rubber, so why don't I request that? I'm going to need to make one of those um, EU detector thingies. So let's see, I should grab my glass fiber cable. I'm going to need more of that stuff. Oh boy. That's alright. I should be able to do it probably with how much I have, but we'll see if I run into an issue. And then of course uh, I'm going to need a circuit, so let's request one of those. There we go. One, please. And while that's cooking up, why don't we lay down what I'm going to need. Oh, you know what? I'm also going to need an advanced circuit. See, I knew I'd forget stuff. That's why I do this. Alright, so I'm going to need to set up one of those nifty little uh, charging benches, which is what I'm waiting on my advanced circuit for. I'm also going to need that EU detector cable. So let's get that going real quick. Ooh, need more redstone. Thank you, equivalent exchange. There we go, EU detector cable. Cool. Um, also going to need out of this bag here just three of these guys. And we can craft up for ourselves. Oh, let's see if I can remember the recipe. Hooray! Charging bench. Sweet. So you guys have all seen me make this a few times here. I'm just going to place down my charging bench like so. I'll place down my glass fiber cables and my EU detector right in the middle. There we go. And now I need to do that nifty little thingy where I place
place down. A couple ender chests. Let's do one right here. And let's see, that's about two away from here. So that should be good. Maybe make these guys face the right way, just for aesthetic purposes. There we go. And then I need my red, green, and blue dyes. Blue. Blue. The pig pushed me, honestly. That's what happened. Darn pigs. One more lapis, please. There we go. Nice. Alright. So I think we're pretty close to being ready here. I'm also going to need a... Um, what did I want to do here? Oh yeah, this guy should be in between those two chests, shouldn't it? I don't know what I'm thinking. There we go. Make it three. That looks good. Now I'm going to need my transposers, which I crafted ahead of time. At least I had something prepared. And I'll get my pneumatic tubes and my screwdriver. There we go. Yeah, that's how I want it to work. But of course I have these chests reversed, so let's fix that real quick. I could have easily just re-dyed them, of course, but, eh, no sense in doing that. <laughs> nice. So, green goes on this side with the full set of enders, or lapatrons, I'm sorry. And, uh, there we go. Cool. Nice looking thing. And from there, I've got my repeater, which will go right like so. Running some cabling over to this guy. Don't mind the mess I'm making, I'll straighten it out. So I'll probably just want my timer right up here on the wall like this, right? Um, so let's get our cabling set up. There we go. I think I made it in time, didn't I? So what this guy should do is pulse. seconds, and then there we go, right? Ta-da! Lapatron goes in. And it's not going to start charging yet, so why don't we just break this? No, break this guy. And then we'll run a line here to the knot. So I'm just going to place down a knot gate like so. Try and keep this guy decently. Nice. Oh, that already sucked up the Lapatron. That's cool. So what we should get now, all I need to do is craft up my terraformer blueprint. So let's place this guy in here, some seeds around the sides, and boom, cultivation blueprint. And all we gotta do to get this working is to right click on the terraformer, and it places the cultivation blueprint in there. If we want to get it back out, we could use a wrench, which is right here. And there's the little cultivation blueprint came right back to me. But we're going to keep it in there for now. Now all I need to do is place my timer back down and bump it back up to 10 seconds. So I'll just break this piece. There we go. And hopefully everything's going to work now. I think I did all this right. Let's see. So in 10 seconds or so, we should get this guy spitting out a Lapatron. Energy flowing. Oh right, I need to do one more thing. Hey, my repeater
meter is not working. Darn it. Is that facing the wrong way, maybe? There it is. Nice. I'll just take these Lavatrons out and drop them in here for now. Cool. Looks like it's planting stuff. And oh, nice. It plants rubber trees now, too. I think that's new. I'm not sure. It's planting some seeds. And you know, because we're running at 512 energy units per tick here, that this is going to run awfully quick. Um, it's going to do a lot of work in a very short period of time, which is nice. So we'll let all this stuff run for a few minutes here, and it's going to burn through this Lapatron rather quickly. But look how much it's already done. I mean, dude, it's going to um, seriously change the landscape of this area significantly. Now there's one more thing I should probably set up, and that's an on-off switch. And the best way to do an on-off switch, probably, is to wire into here. Hmm, how do I want to turn this on and off? Let me think about that for a minute. Alright, so I just went and slept through the night because it was getting a little bit dark out. And uh, one thing I needed to change right before I left was to get rid of this redstone torch. It was affecting my transposer here and was preventing things from getting pulled out. What's up, Enderman? Yeah, that's right. You run. So anyway, uh, what I needed to do... So I disconnected these wires for just a moment. So what I want to do, basically, is... Hmm, make sure I can do this properly, too. I want to basically have an on-off switch here. Uh, there's no real way to use redstone wire that I know of, and maybe somebody can correct me if there is. Um, but there's no way to use redstone wiring here to turn on and off the terraformer. So I want to have a lever next to it that basically disables this charging bench. So uh, at the same time, though, if energy stops flowing through, it's going to start requesting Lapatrons, which is obviously what we don't want. So the lever is going to have to both turn off this guy and turn off the charging bench. So let's think about a design and how we want that to happen. Uh, we're definitely going to need some redstone wiring running down here. So why don't we do this? So that's cool, right? So when I hit the lever, hey. Probably have to run some wiring like so. Nope, right up here. So when I hit the lever, hey, there we go. It turns off this guy. So no longer will it request Lapatrons, it'll disable that piece of it. Already getting some tree growth, nice. And a creeper. Yeah, creeper. I don't want him coming over here and causing me trouble, do I? No, sir. <laughs> nice. What? I was having fun. I'll clean that up in a bit. Alright, so back to where I was at. Alright, so this all levers head up here. Let's think about for a moment exactly how I want to set up this little turn off the engine system change, whatever. And just to make you guys happy, I did fix the flooring over there. Ta-da! So, let's think about how we want to run this wiring. So we definitely want to set it up so that when the system is on, it allows this thing to run, right? So I'm probably going to want to extend a wire from here. That's what I'm thinking. So where's my wiring? This might be easier than I thought it would be. So if we grab some of this stuff... And run it like so. Nope, I'm going to need some of those divider thingies. stone cover strips that, well, I got more basalt than I have stone, so that'll be good. So that way, when the system's on, like so, it should do that and supply redstone current to this thing, allowing the charging bench to run. But if there's power flowing through it, it's not going to be working. So that's not going to work, right? So when there's power flowing through this thing, 
it'll turn off the redstone current disabling this charging bench. So that's probably completely not right at all, and I don't know what I was thinking. Alright guys, so I think I've come up with a neat design, and it gives me the opportunity to show you guys a new machine. I think what I want to go with here is an invert cell. Alright, so let's see, I'm going to need one of those plate assembly guys, uh, which is a red alloy ingot, a stone cathode, some wafers, and some sticks. So I think I have most of that in my inventory right here. Uh, I'm going to just grab these guys, a couple of you, I'm going to need some of, uh, yeah, it should be good. Got a couple of sticks, I'm going to need one of these things, and I've got some red alloy wire. So let's see, um, invert cell, like this, right? go, a couple of you guys, there's your plate assembly. Uh, this is the basic building block of all the different types of cells, the invert and the non-invert. Um, so from there we want to build an invert cell. Looks like it's getting dark, so maybe I shouldn't be hanging out in this creepy forest at night. So I think I used a null cell recently in the past, and that just basically doesn't let the two wires that are going across the same block affect each other in any way. The invert cell will basically invert the um, power going over a block. So let's see if we can get that down. So to build this invert cell, I'm going to check the recipe real quick, I need four stone red wires around that thing. So I think I can manage that no problem. Just need four of you guys and four of you guys. And then it's something like this. And there's your invert cell. So I, if I'm thinking of this right, and I hope I am, because otherwise I'm going to look awfully silly. All right, so that's cool. All right, so right now, if I flip this lever, okay, that's not working exactly the way I wanted to. I was hoping, I think I need to just adjust this. Where's my screwdriver? There we go. Cool. So now, flip the lever, and it allows the clock to run. Turn the lever off, and the clock will be stopped. And from here, I want to run my red alloy wiring, and pretty much run it up like this, I want to say. And I'm probably going to need some kind of uh, jacketed wiring here. So do I have any of that handy? Yeah, I've got some red insulated. That's cool. Red insulated will work. So if I run this like so, it should, let's see, um, I'm going to do this manually. So let's grab this guy, Lapatron Crystal, place him in here, and let's see what happens now if I connect my glass fiber cables back up. I think I'm doing this right, but I'm really not sure. So right now the charging bench is not sending power to my terraformer because this lever is currently off. And with the lever being off, it's keeping the timer stuck. However, if I flip this lever... Okay, what I do? Something happened. Oh, yeah, cool. It pulled out the Lapatron crystal. Nice. <laughs> Neat. Alright, so I need to just grab another one manually. Might just be a side effect, but we'll see what happens if I place another Lapo in there. So now everything's cool, and the timer gets stuck, and this thing's going to run. And I could flip the lever here, and that will both disable the power going through the charging bench by turning off the redstone wire, which makes this a discharge bench, and it'll also cause the timer to be stopped, even though there's no power flowing through it. Flip this lever back on, and power is flowing through again. Sweet. Because power is flowing through, it's keeping the lever of this thing stopped. And with that thing stopped, it's not going to request another lapo. Neat. Now let's see what happens if the lever is engaged and we take a lapatron crystal out of the charging bench. It should allow the timer to run and pull the existing lapo out, which is what it would have just done when that redstone wire activated. And then we get a new lapatron crystal power is back. Cool. I think this is working. And then we can hit the lever and turn it off. Sweet. But turning it on does 
trigger that. So that's a problem I'll have to fix. But that's alright. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It'll actually start running again in a few seconds when I turn it on. So turn it off. It's not asking for any more Lapitron crystals. Turn it on, it ejects that one, but then it asks for a new one, and that's cool. So maybe I'll leave that that way. Maybe I'll see about fixing it. Let me think about a minute how complicated that would be to fix. Alright, I'll be honest with you guys, that doesn't bother me too much. Um, I'm sure there's probably a decent way to fix that, but for the moment I'm not going to worry about it so much. It's probably pretty good. Um, so why don't I go request myself a little bit of dirt here. Maybe uh, 20 of them or so. And look at this forest already getting pretty serious. And while I've got my bag ready, I can just go dump all this stuff in here that I don't need anymore. I probably don't need this, or that, or half these things. Cool. I like it. And I'll just use the dirt to cover up all my circuitry and whatnot. I could use covers and everything too in certain areas, but I think that's pretty neat. And I like the fact that I got to show you guys the inverse cell, because I think that's a pretty cool little toy. Um, it definitely allows for some compact designs to do some interesting things. Um, there was probably an easier way to do this. As you guys know, Direwolf tends to overcomplicate things sometimes, because he doesn't always know what he's doing, but for the most part, I think that works pretty well. So let's turn this thing on. And remember, five seconds later, we'll get a new Lapatron crystal here. That'll be fully charged and ready to roll. Maybe I can adjust this to, like, five and a half seconds. Why not? That sounds cool. All right. Nice. And as you can see, this terraformer is already doing a lot of work. Um, there's a lot of saplings hanging around, even some rubber tree saplings. We've got these uh, tilled fields out here growing some wheat for us. We've got some flowers and some mushrooms and all kinds of crazy stuff happening. So I'm going to come back here in a little bit and see how the progress of this terraformer has made out. I think it's going to be pretty darn solid, though. And you know what, guys? As a result of the fact that we're uh, growing all this cool stuff out here, why don't we help these trees and these plants and all the cool stuff happening grow just a little bit faster? So I'm running back to my base, and I think it's time I build another equivalent exchange power toy. Hooray! Uh, so let's see, what do I got in here for dark matter? Not much, but I do have some in my bag of tricks somewhere. Equivalent exchange. Dark matter, there it is. So let's look up the recipes for dark matter. Uh, there's a bunch, as you know, but the one I'm looking for in particular is this beautiful little green ring right here. Uh, I'm going to need a ring, uh, two dark matter, some saplings, and a red and yellow flower. Well, I've already got a red one, so that's a good step in the right direction. Um, let's grab ourselves four saplings from our miscellaneous uh, trees and whatnot. Also going to need from here a rose. Very nice. And now I think I just need a ring, so I'm going to need some... Uh, that stuff, and how am I for buckets of lava? Hey, I happen to have one right on me. Perfect. So if I combine this guy with these, there we go. Saplings in the corners, flowers, and dark matter. The Harvest Goddess Band. Just by having this on your hotbar, you're going to have all kinds of stuff start happening around you. So if I step outside my house, you can see grass starting to grow. I'm going to get away from my house because I particularly don't like grass so much. Um, and getting closer to weeds and whatnot, things are going to sit here and uh, pretty much grow a little bit faster just by having this on you. But you know what? I'm not going to want to stand here all the time, am I? No, probably not. So let's build another item to automate the use of this little ring. So also inside my bag of tricks, I've got a few pieces of red matter. And how am I for dark matter blocks? Not a terribly large amount. But, I can simply, and I'm going to turn this guy off for a few minutes. I think we've had enough terraforming for the day. Uh, maybe not forever, but... Alright, let's charge this guy up. And I'm just going to target a dark matter block that I happen to have in here, and uh, create some dark matter. Cool. I'm going to need a little bit more of this stuff, aren't I? Yeah, probably. So let's grab our bag here. You know what? I'll use a Klein Star. To get one piece of dark matter should be alright. Klein Star. Boom. Nice. 
So that's five dark matter. And a pair of red. Pedestal. As you would have expected, I hope. Just place the pedestal right here. Now, I'm not entirely sure what this guy's going to do. Um, I know the Harvest Goddess Band will help things grow, but I'm not sure what it does in terms of... And look how quickly the wheat grow with just this thing being on my hotbar. So, I mean, that's cool. Wheat's growing a lot faster. Not sure if it affects trees or not. It may. I don't know. But let's uh, put the Harvest Goddess Band right there. Now, what's that guy going to do? Is he going to increase growth while it's just sitting there? And then if I right-click him and activate him, I think it's going to harvest things around. Let's see. Yep, that's what it did. But I'm guessing it's going to help things to grow faster while it's just nearby, right? And it doesn't seem to have a terribly large range based on the activation of it. So let's turn it off again, plant these seeds, and see how quickly they're going to grow. And I'll kind of monitor this for a few minutes and see what happens. But what's up? Alright, so it looks like this thing really only runs when it's activated, and then also when it's activated, it's going to automatically harvest everything. So that's probably not the best solution. So I'm going to break this guy down and maybe use it for something else. And guys, heading back to my forest, you can see it's grown significantly over a period of time. I uh, still have some saplings here that are waiting to grow, but uh, yeah, the center of this forest is practically dark. Uh, it's just completely covered in trees, and wheat, and pumpkins, and mushrooms, and flowers, and Holy cow, there's a lot of junk back here. So, this forest is looking pretty solid. I think we did a nice job with it. And the uh, Industrial Craft Terraformer, of course, is a lot of fun. Um, you definitely, if you haven't already, check out some of the other cool things that you can do with the Terraformer. Uh, for now, why don't I head downstairs to my nuclear reactor and see what kind of situation my power reserves are at. Um, of course, running Terraformers requires massive amounts of power. Um, I'm sure I drained through at least 10 million, if not more, energy units. Yeah, see, this guy's almost empty, meaning this guy's still full. So we've got a little bit of time before I have to flip my uh, system back on here. So why don't I turn my reactor control off for now? That way, uh, you know, the red power wire is keeping that thing turned off. It doesn't need to be off, of course, but just so that I remember that it is. And, uh, yep, everything's nice and cool in there. I'll get some uranium cells at some point and refill that guy. Alright guys, I feel like this is a pretty good wrapping up point for the episode. I'm um, going to come back next episode in episode 50, which will be the final episode of this Let's Play series, season 2 that is, and season 3 is going to short very soon, probably this weekend. So uh, stay tuned after episode 50 for the start of season 3, which will be version 1.1 with all the new mods and all the new versions and maybe a couple new mods that you haven't seen me use before. So a couple cool things going on there. and. Um, I'll catch you guys next time. Don't forget also, by the way, that there will be a uh, video up showing how to install all the mods for 1.1. So I'll have that same video type of thing going on for 1.1. And you guys will see how to install all the mods. And I'll also upload my config files right away so you guys can start using the same config files I am to get all these mods working. So this is Direwolf20 signing off on episode 49 of Direwolf20's Let's Play. Take it easy.